As always, on a Wednesday, we're joined now by Kel Richards, wordsmith and broadcaster. But of course, it's a, it's a special edition tonight because we're going to get into the word of the year. Last week, you said to our viewers, send us in the suggestions. Well, the results are in. What can you tell us? I can tell you that the uh, votes are all in, uh, they've all been counted, the judges have made their decision and the Peter Credlin Sky News Australian Word of the Year for 2023 is no, N-O. So that, and it came romping in, won by a country mile. In racing parlance it was no first, daylight second. So, and, and it makes perfect it. sense. I love it. <laughs> the word that came second really surprised me. It's a word I hadn't heard until a viewer, a Credlin viewer, nominated it. Controlagark. Controlagarks are uh, celebrities or corporations that try to, to tell everyone else what to do. Uh, the word was only coined in 2023, but when one of your viewers put it onto the list to be voted for, the votes came flooding in, so it came second. Uh, Australians don't like being told what to do. Other, other words on the short list were things like uh, voice, misinformation, diversity, colonisation and midwit. A midwit is someone who is one step above a nitwit. Uh, and sadly, some viewers, I have to say, <laughs> said they thought that covered a lot of politicians. It, 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 a bit unkind, but there you are. Yeah, I'll, I'll, no, I don't think they are. I've met a few midwits in my time. Um, another word that's been thrown up for us to discuss this week is multiculturalism, multicultural. It's a loaded term and uh, it's certainly been forefront of recent debate. It has. Coined in 1935, originally it didn't apply to countries, it applied to individuals, someone who grew up in a number of different cultures. Later it was applied to really unusual situations like uh, Quebec, which is a, a francophone province in an anglophone country. But Later still, it was implied, applied to entire countries, late 60s this started to be, and in 1973, the Whitlam government imposed it on Australia. It was never an election policy. We never got a vote on this. We simply had multiculturalism imposed on us. And the way it was imposed here by the colourful Al Grasby was that uh, local immigrants from different cultures were encouraged to be together and maintain their home culture rather than fully integrate. The long-term result of that way down the track is ancient disputes, ancient uh, warfare, ancient hatreds have been imported into Australia. Mm. And I think that's very sad. And I think you're right to put that out because what we see in parts of Britain, certainly parts of France, and worryingly in some of our larger capital cities where there's virtually an absence of English as our language and Australian culture in some of the communities. Islamophobia, this is another one I want to pick up on because when you're pushing politicians at the moment to call out demonstrable anti-Semitism, they've got to feel like uh, they've got to wheel out Islamophobia at the same time. Well, why these two are being bracketed together, we don't know. You said last night on the program that there's no evidence of Islamophobia on our streets. No one is shouting, gas the Muslims. Doesn't exist. No. So if politicians no. think they're the same, no. then they're not facing reality. It's always been a slightly bullying word. It started off in academia, and academics started to complain. I've seen it in academic journals that uh, unless they entirely endorsed the Quran, they were likely to be accused of Islamophobia. It's always been that kind of bullying word. It's never referred to the kind of things that uh, anti-Semitism does and they should not be bracketed together. Too true. Kel, you need to be a speechwriter in Canberra as well as a regular on this show. Thank you for your time. See you next week.